extensively upgraded and revived frame, chassis, and bodywork as well as engine. In the first episode, we walk through the first 50 years of KTM's history. Nowadays, it is clear that the company is proud of this path and heritage, which contributed a lot to its success. That's why when KTM learned about this series, they decided to jump in and help us tell the story by sharing their point of view on some of the most important moments of the brand. In this video, we chat with René Estebawa, the managing director of the KTM Motor Hall. Inaugurated in 2019, the Motor Hall is a museum to revive KTM's history and a place to experience the brand. You can come to Matikhofen and to the KTM Motor Hall and have a, a look into the world of, of KTM because we can um, have a look into the, the process of a bike design. You know, from the first drawing to the final clay model, um, you can have a complete experience how this process is going on. We have yeah, the, the bikes of 74, um, the designs till the actual bikes, you know, you can see the evolution of the designs um, of KTM, of the, of the logos, of the colors, the, of the product itself. Then for sure, in our, we have three floors in our exhibition. Um, the first one um, is all about technique, all about um, product, um, product um, evolution. Um, you can have a better experience in, in our frames, in our suspension, in our engines. Um, then um, on the second floor um, there are the bikes, so we have in this floor more than 70 bikes from our history and our past. So beginning from the Mackie, the Pony or the Comet um, to the actual model range. And our highlight floor is for sure the, the third floor. There we have 28 um, yeah, heroes, um, let's call it like this. And there is a 12 minute highlight movie with a really good 360 degree experience. So besides that, we have a, a KTM shop. We have um, here in the background, the living workshop. There we have um, our colleague, Shiki. Um, it's really well known in the company and um, he is preparing the bikes. Here in, in the background is um, the bike of Musea fr from 74. And we bring it um, yeah, from an early stage um, to, the, to the final one and to, to bring it to the exhibition. And then we have an uh, innovation lab um, for, for children, there we want to bring the design process a little bit closer to, to our kids and to our new future employees and hopefully um, yeah, cus customers in, in this case. So yeah, the motor is for sure the ultimate KTM experience. So let's start with a quick recap. In the 60s, KTM was becoming mainstream around the world mainly due to the popularity of three distinct models, the Mackie, the Pony and the Comet, which really helped KTM to become a global brand. The Mackie for sure was a world um, premiere um, for us, for KTM in 57, because it was the first moped scooter um, where directly came from KTM. We made the, the own engine from ourselves and yeah, that was a, a quite big start. Um, at the beginning of, of the KTM history. Um, the same was um, with the, with the um, Pony. Um, that was the kickoff to be really relevant on a global market because um, we export the, the bikes in 22 countries and yeah, that was for sure one big milestone for us. And the, yeah, the KTM um, Comet as well um, was for sure relevant on the global market as, uh, as well because there were a lot of different models um, in the Netherlands, they were different than in Austria, um, was really market related and yeah, with different um, colors, um, different models and yeah, we are quite happy because they are relevant um, at this time as well. So. A few years later, one individual managed to shake things up at KTM. John Panton, a racer from the US, captured the attention of KTM and managed to convince the brand to produce a more off-road oriented bike. The cooperation with John Penton was really unique and important for us um, because that was really the kickoff to go off-road um, with the bikes. Um, it was 1969, um, John Penton and KTM made a cooperation um, that we are trying to, to go yeah, in off-road competitive um, races. And yeah, there were races like the six days we have won and yeah, John Benton for sure was the, the basis for future titles for us because 
this was the start um, for the for the off-road segment, and I was quite happy because the opening of the KT Motorhall John was here in Matikhofen. He is, I think, 90 years now. Um, he got uh, a big birthday um, by last year, and yeah, he was there and yeah, saw his bike in our exhibition, and that was for us for sure one one big experience because this man is important for us in our history. This partnership with John Penton was so successful that they had to consider the missing piece of the puzzle, the engine. And so KTM decided to fully develop their bikes in-house. Yeah, to be relevant in, in off-road um, competitions, you have to, to, be, to have a standalone segment and not to, to bring in um, own um, or, or different um, engines from, from Rotax or Sax, where we had in the past. Um, yeah, 1971. It was the start of of a of a landmark in in our um, part. It was the start of the of the DGS um, engines, and for sure um, the basis for for future uh, world championship titles. Because um, a few years later we won the first world championship title um, with Musiev, and yeah, that was our engine just three years later. So that was a quite um, short time. And, but we made it and we are quite happy to have our own or to head our own engines for sure. In the middle of the 80s, business was good for the Austrian brand, but Japanese manufacturers such as Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki and Kawasaki had just entered the international motorcycle market and were spreading like wildfire. The overnight success of the Japanese motorcycle brands, leveraged by more competitive prices and higher reliability, made KTM's scooter and moped sales drop like a stone, which led to a production hiatus in 1988. However, the shock with the Japanese brands didn't only bring obstacles to KTM, it also gave the opportunity to set a new course on the brand's goals. Yes, to have competition is always good um, and improvement, so um, yeah, we tried in this case as well our best. Um, we we focused um, on our core values, we focused on on the ready to race claim on the early stage as well and yeah we tried to do our best to be competitive, to be better than um, other brands and yeah that was for sure in our DNA from the beginning there. As if the situation wasn't challenging enough for the brand, Erich Trunkenports, CEO at the time, passed away and there was no other Trunkenport successor in line. In 1989, the Austrian politician Josef Taus took over 51% of the company and, in three years, the company halved the turnover and doubled the debt, falling into bankruptcy. By 1991, the control of KTM was split across numerous creditor banks. In 1992, KTM was split into four separate entities. KTM Fahrrad GmbH, which produced bicycles, KTM Kühle GmbH, which produced automotive radiators, KTM Werkzeugbau GmbH, which produced tools, and the motorcycle division, KTM Sport Motorcycle GmbH, the core of KTM's earliest successes. In the same year, a joint venture between Cross Holding, what is known today as Pierre Mobility, and other investors, took over KTM Sport Motorcycle GmbH, which regained its footing, steadily increasing their production and turnover. Although nowadays we also see KTM bicycles, the two brands are from two completely different companies. In the history of KTM, for sure one of the most important milestones that Mr. Pira um, made a new structure um, of, of KTM with the new wording KTM Sport Motorcycle. And from this time on, yeah, the product development changed completely um, together with Gerald Kiska. Um, there were new models um, um, on the market. Um, we got a new brand image. We got the color orange the first time here, and that was for sure the basis um, of the actual time now. They were able to invest more in production and also in brand new R&D facilities, leading to more innovative products. It did not take long for KTM to resume their motorsports activities and show the market they should be taken seriously again. In 1993, KTM decided to go all-in in the rally scene and won the Atlas Rally in five different categories. To do rallies is especially the Dakar is for us for sure one of the, the biggest involvements in motorsports because the, yeah, 
These events are one of the biggest um, in motorsports worldwide with the big Mythen um, itself. So that was for us clear that, that we have to be there and um, to be relevant on, on the market, as I already mentioned, um, is that you have to be on every uh, motorsports um, competition um, represented. And that was for sure a time that we took to our first victory of Fabrizio Mioni 2001. And then, yeah, the, the success way started. One year later, the Duke Sport motorcycle was unveiled to the public. It was KDM's first street bike with a big bore, four stroke single cylinder, liquid cooled engine. It was introduced and became one of the brand's most iconic bikes, both for its performance and exclusivity, since in the beginning not many were produced each year. Yes, the idea was that we bring our offered bikes on the street. Um, so we had a gr really good engine, um, the, or we have. <laughs> So we have the LC4 um, engine um, that yeah, com came into the, um, to the Duke frame or into the Duke model and therefore we started uh, yeah, a new milestone in our history because um, the Duke 1 or 2 are such big bikes and types uh, of models um, that's, that we are quite happy about it. So And the Duke bikes are now the basis for, for actual model range. So we have the Super Duke now. We have all kind of dukes um, in every segment and every CC um, category and yeah that was for sure 94 one big year for us and the, the Duke. In 1995 KTM started the acquiring spree by purchasing Sweden's Useberg AB and taking over white power suspensions which later became WP suspensions. The following years, KTM debuted their signature orange color livery and introduced the Adventure High Performance Bikes, which turned out to be a success. KTM was becoming a global phenomenon and was causing quite a stir, namely in the racing world, starting to become the team to beat or to join. Don't miss the next episode.